Hey fellas, this is Colony and you're watching Magic Strawberry. In the closing months of 2019, two big temple titles were released, those two being Death Stranding and Jedi Fallen Order. And I had to choose which one I wanted to cover for the last show during the fall semester. I chose Death Stranding and I very much regret that decision, which I will happily rectify now by finally getting around to Jedi Fallen Order. Jedi Fallen Order has taken a long road to get made as EA is notorious for canceling various Star Wars titles and their adamant shift towards multiplayer games over single player experiences. Developers at Respawn Entertainment even faced some pushback from Lucasfilm with their original pitch for their game to center around Jedis, with the studio insisting they make a shooter instead. Nevertheless, the studio persisted with their vision with constant give and takes, and I must say that from the moment you boot up the game, it does have that traditional Star Wars feel to it, with the score including soaring piccolo accents that John Williams is famous for. The game centers around former Jedi Padawan Cal Kestis, who survived the Jedi Purge of Order 66 and is now laying low five years later while the Galactic Empire continues to search for hidden Jedi with the help of their Inquisitors. But his powers become apparent during an inspection, and while on the run, he's rescued by a former Jedi, Sierra Jenda, and her partner, Grease. Sierra has been looking for Jedi recruits who would be able to access ancient vaults on remote planets, and it just so happens that Cal fits the bill. During his search, he discovers holocrons of Evo Cordova, a Jedi master who hit a holocron containing a list of Force-sensitive children, but they can only access it by following Cordova's path. With this new information, Cal, Sierra, and Grease set out to figure out how to access the holocron and rebuild the Jedi Order before the Empire gets their hands on it. If I had to explain Jedi Fallen Order in a nutshell, I would say it's a game with Dark Souls and Arkham style combat, God of War type puzzle solving in which you can use the force to slow down certain objects, and the Uncharted S traversal mechanics, and I have to say that Respawn pretty much nailed it with all of these different styles, and letting each planet exist as their own hub world was a solid decision as well, allowing the players to explore several different open world environments just like in The Witcher 3. And with different lightsaber parts to be found everywhere you go, it gave me plenty of motivation to search every nook and cranny of each map to build my dream lightsaber which happened to be the double bladed green lightsaber. You can also find different outfits, but it's a shame that the only outfits you find are different colored ponchos. And if those don't strike your fancy, there's always the extremely basic Jedi outfit. You don't explore alone, however, for you have the extremely useful and portable BD-1 who can unlock certain packages and doors you come across, as well as lend you a stem pack whenever your health is low. But mostly he's just there to be cute, and I love him. Enough also can't be said about the environments of these worlds, as well as with Respawn wearing their love of Star Wars on their sleeve. Practically everything looks authentic to the world this game takes place in, and it's what makes it even more enjoyable to be exploring worlds within the canon that haven't been touched on much yet, except for Kashyyyk that is, where everything looks great, except for the Wookiees themselves. And as you enter new areas, the gameplay grows momentarily choppy as the new landscapes are being loaded, and it makes you wish that perhaps a little more money could have been thrown at this game's development. Respawn also nails the combat, and I can confidently say that this is the best a Jedi has ever felt in a game, perhaps since the old Battlefield 2. And something that must be kept in mind is that Cal is not a Jedi Master, and has never technically finished his training, so most fights should be a struggle, and well, they are. You have to be extremely methodical and strategic in every encounter, and it really works to the game's advantage. Unlike in the Force Unleashed games where you can lay waste to entire squadrons of enemies with practically no effort whatsoever, each fight is given more weight in Fallen Order, and so you can feel Cal's initial struggles before he becomes more and more in tune with the Force through various upgrades. You can access these upgrades whenever you find meditation circles scattered throughout every map, as well as heal by choosing the rest option, but doing this will also cause all enemies to respawn, so you'll have to think carefully before doing so. The only drawback with the combat is that the lightsaber doesn't feel as lethal as it should, which was a conscious decision made by the developers and studio since the game is rated T and must remain family friendly, and that means no decapitations unless you're fighting droids. While the decision is understandable, it does sometimes feel like you're swinging a baseball bat rather than something that can cut through limbs like their butter. Thankfully, it doesn't bring down the enjoyment of the combat too much, plus you can always just have fun by force pushing the stormtroopers off a cliff. The motion capture acting is solid, with each actor giving respectable performances, especially Cal and Sarah, played by Cameron Monaghan and Deborah Wilson. Sarah in particular ends up being the most intriguing character in the game, as her struggles with the Jedi Order are well documented and yet she does all she can to resurrect it, knowing it's the best chance they have at bringing down the Empire. 
In short, Jedi Fallen Order is the Jedi combat simulator I've always wanted, made all the better with a stellar narrative and differing mechanics that all come together to form an experience that I feel is essential. Despite the fact that it pulls from every third person trope we've come to expect, Respawn pulls from all the right influences and has crafted a title that deserves its place within the Star Wars canon. I give Jedi Fallen Order a 9 out of 10. Thanks for watching Magic Strawberry. Feel free to hit the like button down below, subscribe to the channel, and follow us on Twitter as ETV Goofing Off. See ya!